Hello guys and welcome back to another chapter in my analog DIY synthesizer um, tutorial videos. In this video what I'm dealing with here and what I'm going to run you through is the U-Synth envelope generator. So basically this is a very similar schematic to the one which is on the U-Synth. So this is the original U-Synth envelope generator schematic which I um, sort of downloaded of, uh, quite a while back and I've kind of like now sort of re kind of done my own adaptation I mean pretty much the same um, parts which are used as we can see we have three stages here this part here where you've got the three transistors um, I think I believe this is they would call this is, is a wire in a Schmidt trigger configuration so we accept a gate voltage anything from say I think about 5 to 10 volts don't quote me on that, about 5 to 10 volts and we send that, that pulse into the uh, timer here which is a timer chip which is a 555 um, I've seen on the website it says don't use an any 555 so you can use something like a uh, 7555 and there's a few others but don't use the any 555 I think it's something to do with um, the amount of current it draws from the power rails um, not 100% sure. I mean, like I said, I'm not an electrical engineer, and I'm not too savvy on what's what with these. But you know, I try and put stuff together, and sort of make some accidental findings, and just trying to share them with you guys with basically what I've done. Not saying you must do this one. You know, make it your own, as I always say. Sort of take a circuit, make it your own, adapt it to your sort of take tell it to your taste. Surprise yourself. So yeah, so basically this is what we have here. So this was a very similar envelope which is used in the mini and micro brute. I'm not 100% sure on the matrix brute. There's a very uh, very good likelihood that there is a, it is used in the matrix brute as well. So yeah, many respects and thanks to Eves Usan. I hope I've pronounced your name correct. And he's the guy who developed all these circuits and you can check out. his website on www.yusymph.net and he's got lots of circuits there which are really really good to make up you, you know people make them for uh, euro rack modules etc so I've just been using a lot of quite a few of these circuits actually for experimentation and they're quite straightforward and I've sort of had a pretty much 98% success rate first time got them working and you know easily obtainable parts and I actually think this is actually an adaptation of his his adaptation he's adapted somebody else's circuit from back in the 70s again so if I was kind of reading so if I'm not 100% correct on that history Mr. Uson I apologize but anyway getting down to business so yeah so like I said what we have here on my adaptation here what I've got is um, two We've got to have a switch here, a two-way switch here, um, single pole, double throw switch. So we can either have an LFO in to trigger the envelope, or we can have the gate CV in from our gate CV keyboard. I don't know. You might have a Keystep Pro. You might have well, not necessarily a Keystep Pro, but you know something which actually generates a CV gate out. So that's what the CV gate out goes into. And we've got a diode here. I put a, um, a shot key diode on here. But to be honest with you, I don't think it was necessary because I swapped this shot key diode for a normal signal 1N4148 diode and there was no difference because I was kind of having a problem with quite a high um, CV bump and I think that's something to do with more to do with the attack phase how because I really tried to get my envelope as snappy as possible. I might have overdone it on that, trying to trim the resistance too, uh, too far back. Um, so yeah, so you can have a signal diode in here and just observe how we basically use this pull down. I think this stops we stops us getting any um, current or voltage going back. I've had that before destroying Arduino. Um, so yeah, so something to take note of. We have our protection here, and this hundred K is a bit um, what's the word selective because it kind of depends on when what happens is. On my version, I have my gate signal, my gate voltage comes in, and I have another resistor here before it gets to this stage. So that could change. So I think the prescribed value for that was actually something like one mega ohms. To be honest with you, not necessarily not 100k, but you kind of got to you've kind of got to measure it. Measure your, I'd say, take a take a tester and measure your voltage here. You don't want to overdo it, where well, you could uh, 
I'm not sure 100% sure, but you can end up blowing up your, your chip. Not badly, but you just won't work. You'll kill it. Um, yeah, so as we can see, we've got the 555 timer here. And this was a component which wasn't actually on the original schematic. Now, this is a N-channel FET, which is a BS170. Now, looking at the... Um, at the uh, documentation on it, apparently it was added because what it does it it breaks the decay circuit when the gate signal returns to zero volt. So before the gate cycle is finished, um, it sort of yeah does something does something to break it away from the decay phase. So I'm not 100% sure. I haven't really noticed much of a huge difference, but when I had it and when I didn't before, or should I say? before I introduce this extra component. But yeah, it'd be great to see what you guys um, do if you knock this one up and, and have a look, uh, see how you get on with it, if you, f you find it's really necessary, or you might find it's not necessary. Uh, so what we've got here is, we have four potentiometers for our attack, decay, and sustain phase. And three of them, the attack, release, and decay, are one mega ohm logarithmic potential so logarithmic taper whereas our sustain is a 10k and it's a b10 um, again we've just got sort of standard signal diodes here now this was a modification that I made here because I didn't want to do a switching envelope I just kind of said to myself I want a very fast attack and that's it so if we look on the original schematic we can see that uh, we have a switch here so we've got 680 ohms for a slower attack, 120 for a fast attack to switch between. So I basically just put a trimmer in there, which is here, and then I can kind of tailor that to how and just leave it at a set. Right? Well, you could find the resistance measure with the trimmer, find the res a, a, res a desired resistance, and then just swap it for a fixed resistor. Um, not doesn't matter too much on the resistors that you use for this. You could either use metal film, the blue ones, or you could use you know the carbon uh, beigey coloured colored ones the five percent beige colored ones so what we have here is our two diodes over here right let's just backtrack a bit let's just pull that back sorry so what happens is we we have our envelope generation happen uh, we have all these components linked up and what happens that goes out to this op amp down here in the corner which is our our positive envelope out so what we do with that is then send that into um, into the into an op amp over here, and I invert the signal, so unity gain inversion. So you can see I've got 100k coming out of here into the inverting input, and then in a feedback negative feedback loop, we've got 100k again. So as long as these two values are the same, you're going to get you pretty much get unity a unity gain. What I mean by that is so. An inverse unity gain so say for instance I've got plus 10 going in here plus 10 volts I'm gonna get minus plus 10 so the inv inverse polarity hence why if we look down here we can see we have a minus um, I've got ENV minus EMV which is for negative polarity and a positive polarity we balance the two between with a potentiometer uh, again probably go for one mega ohm on this one and once you turn it to the middle if you measure it in the middle you should have about zero volts, so you kind of, you can actually use that kind of as a depth pot if you're quite clever with it. So it kind of acts as a depth control as well. So as we get to the middle, we can pretty much null. So we've got no envelope voltage coming out, and we go hard left or hard right, we'll get the negative or positive polarity. So this is the first envelope, which is um, used as my main modulation source. So what I do, I, I send it to my VCO. I've also got it going to both. Um, voltage controlled filters and I'm hoping planning if I can get a patch panel on my project we can have it as an envelope going out there's also a second envelope generator circuit which is exactly the same but it was just used for the um, controlling the VCA and um, I don't have the negative polarity right if we have a look down at this uh, particular part of the quad op amp this is our release times so this is quite a little important bit here which is something you could play about with. So again we've got a um, single pole double throw switch and I've got two capacitors in here. Now one capacitor is about 0.4 UF 
it's a bit under the prescribed value of about hmm, let me have a think about this again no sorry um, 0. Point, yeah I think I use about 0. 0.47 and there is a 10 UF 10 microfarad capacitor as well so we what we do is this is a timing cap so as we switch if we go to the bigger timing cap the bigger the, the release or the longer the release time is so you can use a switch just to switch that around for really really sharp snappy percussive um, releases or you could have it for sort of like a long more droning or for sort of like pad effects etc so again this is one of the things it all, all depends on the purpose you're um, using the envelope generator for and I have the same thing on the other envelope generator for the um, for the for the voltage controlled amplifier and to be honest with you that's about it as far as this uh, envelope generator is concerned like I said have a look on usymph.net modular and look for the ADSR and there's quite a bit of a page on that and there's a, a few versions he's got the old version posted up there and the newer version which uses this uh, BS170 um, FET field effect transistor sorry forgot to mention this little part here so what we've got here is a, a small configuration with a diode and LED indicator there is another way you could do this you could eliminate this and basically wire up a, um, a LED through a transistor buffer to give you the indication of your um, your envelope phases so yeah I think I've covered everything I hope I've covered everything and if I haven't what I will do is um, post an amendment video to this one anyway thanks for uh, thanks for your patience thanks for watching I hope you've taken something away from this one and any any comments or questions leave them in the relevant section don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so to the channel thanks for your support guys and see you around take it nice and easy